Hello, I'm Chef Charles Draghi, and we're here in my restaurant, Erbaluche. We're going to do one of my favorite dishes, a summertime dish. Uh, very, very light, uh, like many of my dishes are, just a simple pan sauce with fish. Uh, fish and greens are uh, one of the best, healthiest ways to eat and one of the most flavorful. Now, to start off with, though, you need to have a really nice oil. Uh, either a great extra virgin olive oil or one of my favorites that I'll show you is to make a little roasted shrimp oil, uh, which is a great thing to have around, uh, not only to roast other fish, which gives a really nice deep oceany uh, flavor, but also you can use it to dress salads, you can use it to do um, uh, light roasted vegetables, uh, to bake potatoes. So it's a really nice flavorful oil to have around. It's very simple. You take some shrimp, I buy the whole uh, with the shell on shrimp, uh, peel them, devein them. These we'll use in the recipe to actually eat, but always save the shells. The shells, I'll simply add to a little bit of canola oil. Because you really want the flavor of the shrimp to come through, what you want to do is start with a neutral oil. So a grape seed oil or a canola oil won't add um, other flavors that sometimes can be off flavors with the shrimp. Uh, as much as olive oil is delicious, it'll add another dimension that you may not want uh, in terms of spiciness or greenness to the dish. So we're simply going to put the shrimp shells into the canola oil in this case. Um, let them slowly toast in there. You'll see them start to fry. There'll be little bubbles coming up as the water evaporates out. And they'll start to fry in there. And then you'll get this uh, gorgeous, almost lobster bisque sort of roasted shellfish aroma uh, that comes up. You'll also start to see the color of the oil change. Uh, because uh, shrimp and lobster and crab are loaded with beta carotene, you'll get a nice orange uh, viscous uh, kind of quality to the oil. Uh, it also is enhanced with just a little touch of salt, brings the flavor out as well. This is what it will look like. I put it into a glass here so you can see the deep orange uh, color, beautiful aroma that comes out of it. So I'm actually going to put a little bit of that into this pan here. I'm going to let this pan get good and hot. And then I have some uh, swordfish steaks here with some herbs from my garden. You can use pretty much any type of um, leafy aromatic herbs with this. I prefer parsley, mint. I have some lovage here, which is gorgeous. It's in the celery family. It has a flavor of uh, celery, almost a little curry and uh, lemon to it as well. Uh, some fresh marjoram, parsley. They all work really well. So what I'm going to do is I have now um, a pan that's heating with the shrimp oil. I can smell all that nice roasted shrimp. It almost smells like shrimp off a grill. I'm going to season this with a little bit of that same herb salt we talked about before. A little bit of white pepper. I prefer white pepper with fish. Uh, white pepper is black pepper with the skins removed. Uh, so it doesn't have as heavy a flavor but it also doesn't change the color of your dishes. If you put black pepper in a sauce, sometimes it'll darken the sauce. So, nice. Season both sides. And I'm gonna take a filet, put it into this nice hot shrimp oil and let it sear. Cooking for myself. You can cook many Filets with the shrimp oil, not having to use very much of it because the flavor really imparts, and what you're looking to do is to trap the moisture in the fish. So it doesn't really need to necessarily um, use twice or three times as much oil for twice or three times as much in a recipe. Just a little bit in there is fine. As it's searing on one side, I'm going to take the shrimp, I'm just going to place those around. heat down a little bit. Lightly season the shrimp as well. Mm -hmm. You see it just sort of moves around with the oil. At that point the shrimp are almost about halfway done. Move it to the other side. Turn the shrimp
And then at this point, I like to add some seasonings to it. In addition to the salt and pepper, pink peppercorns, I think are a really nice addition. Gorgeous floral kind of aroma. Pink peppercorns, you don't need to worry about the recipe becoming too peppery with a white pepper and a pink because pink peppercorns are not actually peppercorns, they're not in the same family. They're actually related to sumac. So they have almost more of a floral quality. And then to that, fennel seeds. Now, along with the peppercorns and fennel seeds, if you like, and I do like, you can add a little red pepper flake. Depends on how spicy you would like it. Shellfish tends to like a little bit of spice. So lobster, shrimp, crab, they all like a little bit of heat. But if you don't like heat, that's not a problem. Well, just let this go a minute. You want the swordfish, you always want swordfish to be cooked all the way through, but still moist inside. So I'm gonna turn the heat back off, take the shrimp and just sort of let them rest on top of the swordfish. Okay. So they're not really gonna cook that much more. The swordfish, the heat is just gonna go through in that shrimp oil, now all the flavor of the spices are coming together. We're gonna to simply remove this to a plate with some nice greens, um, some fresh greens, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of a sherry vinegar and lemon juice mixture to this. With, uh, with fish particularly, I like to use uh, fresh greens. You can saute greens, you can use green beans or asparagus, uh, but particularly as a summary kind of flavor. I like the snap and the crunch of fresh greens, particularly peppery greens. A little bit of arugula, um, a little bit of radicchio or treviso. This is the, the correct uh, original radicchio. And then also, if you're at the farmer's market and you're buying beets or radishes, don't let them throw away the greens because those are absolutely delicious. They're in the arugula family. They have a very similar flavor to arugula. So just a little uh, mixture of greens there. I'm going to take the swordfish with the shrimp, put it right on top of the greens. The juice of the shrimp and the swordfish and the spices, it's all in this pan with the shrimp oil. So now we're going to make basically like a vinaigrette. I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, sherry vinegar mixed with lemon. You can use red wine vinegar or just straight lemon juice, whatever you'd like. Even balsamico, if you like, it tends to be a little heavy handed for this dish uh, to my palate. but. And then all you do is you just simply swish. If there's any caramelization, you just get that off of the pan. And then just a little final seasoning at the end of salt. And we just sort of spoon that over the fish. So. So we have the swordfish and we have the vinaigrette and the greens, really beautiful aromatics. And then just very, at the very end, because you don't want the uh, herbs to uh, lose any of their nice flavor, you just tear them. Now, a lot of times with herbs, you can chop them, but to tear them releases a lot of their oils and the aromatics come out. And just to sprinkle them on top. That was a little fresh oregano, some parsley, A little bit of, uh, this is wild fennel, which is probably one of the most classic flavors with this as well. So that mixes with the pink peppercorns and the fennel seed, gives you a couple different layers of flavor, the little bit of uh, acidity and that nice roasted shrimp kind of aroma. And then you can even just put a little drizzle of that sauce back on top to help release more flavor of the herbs.